And we see the same thing in our world. We know that the religion of Islam is one where it is, when it is in great power, as it is in much of the Middle East, it rules with an iron fist. It has, it has everybody under its domain. You must submit to Islam or else death is certain. But we know that Islam behaves in those two forms whereby when it's in power, yes, it is like that. It's very in your face. It's very prevalent. 100% of that nation will be taken over and those that, those that rise up against it will be put down to death. But Islam also behaves itself when it's in the minority as a subtle serpent. It will appear as an angel of righteousness. It will appear to be an, a religion of peace. It will be your friend at work. It will be your, your co-worker. It will be somebody that you can speak to on a regular basis. And that religion has done this time after time after time to once, once the tides start to shift, once, once the, uh, the balance starts to lean their way and they become one that is higher in power, one that is greater than numbers, then they change and suddenly they start to enforce their mischief by harm and by her and by an outward show of it. We saw also this in, in the Roman Empire in the Dark Ages, whereby the Catholic Church was going about slaying and murdering and torturing and by inquisition seeking to pull people out of their homes and out of their lifestyle, out of where they were at, in order to force them to convert, force them to recant their Christ, force them to submit to the Roman Empire. And they did that in the Dark Ages. But we also see now the exact opposite, whereby in Fourth Kingdom Babylon that we now presently live in, uh, it's much more subtle. There is a subversion. There is a propaganda push. There is a, 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 a quiet law that is often in force in order to cause mischief, in order to run to mischief, in order to put mischief upon God's people. Psalm chapter 28 and verse 3 highlights this. Psalm 28 and verse 3 says, Draw me not away with the wicked and with the workers of iniquity, which speak peace to their neighbors, but mischief is in their heart. So they are speaking peace. They're crying, peace, peace. When the Bible says it's very clear that there is no peace. They're saying, we are a peaceful people. We are a, a jovial people. We are kind people. We're here to do you good. But mischief was always in their hearts. They speak one thing, they devise another. And this is probably the most dangerous of enemies. This is as Satan coming in the grass, in the Garden of Eden, where he would seem to be quoting God's word. He would seem to be one that was relatable to the woman. He would seem to be uh, um, someone that was bringing her good, offering her that she could be as God, something good, bringing peace. But in the heart was devising something completely and entirely different. But either form of mischief that the wicked would put upon the people of God, God therefore always has an answer. And we see that as you read down in verse 4. It says, give them according to their deeds. And according to the wickedness of their endeavors, give them after the work of their hands. Render to them their desert, because they regard not the works of the Lord, nor the operation of his hands, he shall destroy them and not build them up. Blessed be the Lord, because he hath heard the voice of my supplications. And again, blessed be the God that finds his people crying out to him when they need something. Crying out to him when they are oppressed. Crying out to him when the workers of iniquity are practicing mischief upon them. And he hears and he enforces his own will upon them. And their own mischief falls upon themselves. 